Industry insights help tell the story of trends. One of the higher volume buyers agents in Slow County is Graham Baldwin. With interest rates being at six and a half and mortgage applications going up, what does that mean for that buyer? More competition. Now they're going to be fighting to get that house. And instead of there being two, three offers on a place, we might be back in, a, in an environment where we're looking at five, six offers on places again. Graham is the eyes and the ears on the streets and gives us some insight into what it takes to buy a home in an ultra competitive market. Interest rates are softening and inventory is still very low. So if you're thinking about jumping back in, be sure to heed the advice of somebody who is seeing it on a daily basis like Graham. Now your host of the Slow County Real Estate Podcast, James Bueno. San Luis Obispo Real Estate Podcast. Doesn't know what to do with his hands, Mr. <laughs> Hal Swayze. Da-da-da. I felt like Bill Murray. Well, you're supposed to pause for dramatic effect. So I'm pausing for dramatic effect. Well, your cadence is... Really enticing. Thank you. It's called I a pregnant that. pause. Well, that's JT. JT, how are you, sir? Awesome. Are you kidding me? Get to be here with you guys. And our, our newest member that's back again, Mrs. Bobby Kelly. How are you? I'm lovely. Thank you for having me. We have this tall gentleman in the building. Yes. And who is he? Six foot, six foot seven, drink a water. Six, seven. <laughs> seven six, eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. I you're, always tell you short. Yeah. You're, not, you're, there's no, you're six, not six, eight. eight. There's no way. Six, seven, and seven, eighths. See, you know, I go yeah, exactly. Have yeah. you ever stood next to him? I, I have. Yeah, well, I'm by taller. I'm by tall people all the time. Yeah, he's got his own weather time. system up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've never okay. heard that before, right? So that <laughs> no, yeah. This is Graham Baldwin, our top buyers agent on the team, born and raised. Correct. As, right a, as a top buyers agent. No, no, not raised as that. No. Oh, but he was locally, the locally national champion, junior triathlete. Correct. When I was eight years old, he was six seven. When he was eight years yeah. old, yeah, claim the fame. Yeah, yeah. All right. I I could have done that with eight year olds when I was thirty, <laughs> in the eight year old division, but yeah, not at go. eight, not at age eight. Hey, well, you know, uh, next month Graham's going to be celebrating six years with us. That's awesome. And you know, you said he was our top agent. Do you know that in year one, he was our top agent? Wow. Every year in year since. two. In year three, wow. in year four, okay. in year five, in year six, he was our top agent. Okay. So we're glad to have you here, Graham. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to be here, guys. I mean, it's okay, Graham. So he did not peak yeah. at eight. He did it not. Like, it sounds like not. life's been no. okay for you. Yeah, he's yeah. been great. He hasn't yeah. peaked yet. And Are he's you not the me? only agent we should go on. Bobby, when we introduced you on our last podcast, I didn't realize that you were also born and raised here, but even more than born and raised, right? You've got family that goes back pretty far in San Luis County. Yep, absolutely. My grandparents came to Atascadero a very long time ago. They were some of the first families there, and they started the first grocery store in Atascadero, Village Mart. Where is it now? Oh, man. I... Over by the police station in Atascadero, somewhere okay. over there, I think. Ooh, Did they put it near the police station for a reason? I don't think it was the police station <laughs> oh, okay, back then. Okay. No, Just not, not police, with their oh, track There is a police station. Obviously, yeah. You should know. Obviously. Uh, I should. First store. It's probably 20s or 30s, I'm guessing. Maybe earlier than that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are you first generation? I'm first generation, yeah. Your yeah. folks were born. Your mother was from South Africa, right? South Africa. Yeah. My dad was born in Germany. A German citizen or a U.S. citizen? Or? He, he was born on a British naval base in Germany after the war. So he's British? He is, yeah, he actually has his British citizenship, not his German, since he was on the British base, correct. And you wow. have dual citizenship, is that right? I've got tri-citizenship, correct. Tri-citizenship. Uh, triathlete, yeah. tri-citizenship. Yeah. 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 yeah, You're the first guy I've ever got, met. Got three kids, tri- one right. wife. One wife, well, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. We well, kept the one. What are your three citizenships? So it's going to be the U. Well, it was the um, it was European. So but EU, the, the oh, EU. But then after Brexit. Brexit, so now I'm only uh, British. You know, just British. So now I can't travel to Spain and Italy and all those fun countries on that passport, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for Brexit. Yep. Um, South African. Okay. And American. Oh, U.S. citizen. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, that. yeah. that's no, good. Good, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's an important one. So, so yeah. where are you headed next month? I will be heading to South Africa for three weeks for a family reunion. Wow, in March. fantastic! Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah. So in the meantime, you got to sell some houses. Yes, <laughs> gotta get busy. You've been busy. How many homes have you sold or put in escrow this month? Uh, this month, uh, what well, put I put six in. Great. Yeah. So yeah, Graham, it's always good for us, you know, because he's dealing with buyers day in, day out, um, writing offers. We want to bring Graham on because he provides an insight that um, you know is more involved than most. Because you know, six homes, seven homes in a month—that's a lot when you think there's two thousand realtors in the county and about two thousand sales. How common is that, Bobby? First? That's not common. Not common. <clears throat> no. That's yeah. you're probably in the top five of the company. So last month we talked about 
you know, from each one of our chairs, our perspective on, you know, what we were seeing and feeling in the marketplace and a little uptick in activity on the internet, a little uptick, uptick in activity on listings, sales, little uptick and was, in yeah. sales. We were just wondering what, what you're seeing out there. Cause you're out there dealing with buyers every day. Graham, you, are you feeling kind of the same thing or what are you seeing out there? There's definitely been an uptick in buyer activity. As everyone knows, you know, last year we had interest rates, you know, hovering around 8%. We were still working with buyers, but it tended to be a lot more cash in the market. There still is a lot of cash in the market. At the end of last year, 80, maybe even 90% of the people I was working with were buying cash. Really? Correct. Yeah. I, I never, that didn't register. Well, thanks for sharing. Because we, you know, we have such a high level of cash at 50 or 60% in the county. Right. But yeah, okay. Wow. 80 or 90%. Hey, yeah. Graham, right. I'm still interested. Where are people getting the cash? <laughs> I, I haven't know. figured that out yet. Yeah, yes. I know. From your pension plan. <laughs> yeah, my, my pension <laughs> yeah. plan. Yeah, that's why it's going down. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, but this year as we start out, you know, January 2024, um, we've definitely seen a lot of buyers now that we have rates kind of in the six and a half percent range uh, coming back. Um, so I think there's going to be, I, well, there is uh, pent up demand from buyers right now um, that you know kind of weren't in the market for the last six months at the end of 2023. So I've talked to a lot of the great lenders that we work with, and they've all said that their uh, you know their mortgage applications are up significantly mm -hmm. um, just in this new, in the new year here. So I think there's going to be a lot of new buyer active. Well, there already is. And I think it's going to continue to increase, continue it through quarter one and into quarter two. You know, hopefully that also with those rates will also kind of loosen up the inventory as well. Some sellers will realize, okay, well maybe I can jump ship now from my three and go to six and a half. It's not as bad from going you know from three to eight. What do you tell that buyer that's got a little bit of cold feet now because it seems like we ha we do have a subset of buyers that are always waiting for something to change well i tell them exactly what i just told you now is interest rates being at six and a half and mortgage applications going up what does that mean for that buyer more competition now they're going to be fighting to get that house and instead of there being two three offers on a place we might be back in, a, in an environment where we're looking at five six offers on places again for a buyer now and they're serious that want to buy sooner the better because prices aren't coming down the only thing that's going to go up is competition why do you think you're so effective at getting offers accepted because your acceptance rate's really high yeah i think the biggest thing for me is communication with the listing agent i don't just take somebody's offer and email it over to the uh, listing agent, cross our fingers and wait to hear back. I'm in constant communication, asking them how many offers they have in hand. You know, where I fish as much as possible to find out where those offers are at, so where we need to be. And my job is to get the clients the house for the best price and the best terms, right? Sure. But I tell them my job is also to get you the house. It's interesting because I'm usually on the other side of that where offers come in, and I just find it fascinating you know, that somebody would just take something so important as an offer on a home and just quote unquote mail it in. You know, I've heard you talking to other agents and I've, you know, we've worked on some transactions obviously together and, you know, just finding out what's important in terms of not just money, but price and finding that information out. It's too bad because it's just communication. Where do most of the problems come from? Communication you know, or lack of it. Lack of it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not just a text or an email. So I, I think what you do is so good and so helpful for your clients, you know, and you find those things out. And plus, I think you've built good relationships because aren't you then when you get an offer, you're trying to sell that agent on your offer, your buyer, the loan program, everything. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot more that goes into it than just the price. Contingencies, figuring out how to be creative with those so that the seller is most comfortable with the offer, who, who they're working with, is, you know, getting their loan through, yep. uh, making sure that, that, you know, making sure that the good local lender that's got a good track record um, and that, that lender is also reaching out to the listing agent, vouching for the client, saying, you know, letting them know that they're, that they're solid, they're, you know, underwritten, ready to go. There should be no hiccups. Um, so all, 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 the, all those things from all different angles. So That makes a huge difference. I mean, hey, the, the fun part of this podcast is it's not rehearsed. Right. You know, we kind of make up our questions on, on the fly. So Dave Ramsey says uh, how important it is to select a, an agent based on experience. I never understood that. I, I, I I selected agents back before I joined your team. I selected agents based on referrals. And I didn't know a thing about, about the agent. And yet, when I hear you talk about getting offers accepted, gosh, how important is it for your clients to know your track record? If Dave Ramsey said, go look for an agent with, with experience, what questions, Graham, would you 
proposed to a real estate agent that you were interviewing to be your agent? It's experience, right? How many times have you done this? And when you mean how many times have you done this, you're talking about what's your activity in the marketplace? How many transactions do you do in a given time period, like a year? And how to get those offers accepted in your strategies going forward that you've used in the past that prove results. And so if you've only done it three times a year, four times a year, you probably haven't seen as many things that pop up during the transaction, during the negotiations, and know how to deal with them and get over those hurdles. When you talk about building an offer, it would seem like to the outside world, building an offer would be a template and you fill in the blanks. Here, here's the price, here's the escrow period, here's this, here's that. You just fill in the blanks. Your offers are filled with incredible creativity. And where, did, where does that come from? Doing it a lot. You used to swim. <laughs> you still know how to swim, right? I still know how to swim. Uh, yes. I mean, I got to imagine you had to practice a fair amount. I'm very swimming. used to repetition. Yep. Right? Yep. Right. Yeah. And then, but you know how to do a backstroke or whatever the other strokes are, regular, what do you call them? I can do all the strokes. Right. Yeah. All the strokes, the swim strokes. Are you as fast as uh, Michael Phelps? I am not as fast as Michael Phelps. Got it. Or else I probably wouldn't be selling real estate. Yeah. You bet you can beat him now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right? But right. you're better at, the, at real estate than he is. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That is but, true. But I got to think at a certain level, the, the, what you're working on is so small and nuanced in your, how you swim. Right. The swim stroke. Yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. So, so what I see with Graham is the nuances he's learned by doing this so many times, the little things like a defensive lineman and how they hold their stance or pushing a little on the left to get a leverage and go right or whatever that is. So it's, it's not an uncommon process for him. Bobby loves it when we use sports analysis. I do. That's my favorite. <laughs> you, you know, baseball season's 162 games. You're playing all summer long. You're playing every day. And that sounds like, like your world where you're playing in the real estate business every day. You're showing property, you're writing offers almost every day, right? Yep, that is correct. So if you were on a baseball team, before the game starts, what do you do? Warm up. Warm you warm up. Practice, and, yeah. and you practice, yeah. right? You take Point. batting practice, you take infield practice. BP. I, I was just wondering, in, in your business, Graham, how often do you practice? Sometimes when I get busy, I'll forget to practice. But you know, a lot of times I think we're always here working on our skills um, you know, JT, you're, you obviously have been, you know, crucial to my development uh, since I've been here. We take it very seriously here. Um, we take our job seriously. You know, every day getting better and you know, refining our skills so that we can serve our clients to the best of our abilities. And it's fun. It's 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 so much fun, and and you see, we see it in the results. And wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I think most most players in the real estate business only go to the games. I don't think yeah. they. I don't think many of the people in this industry practice. So it's it's fun to watch you practice, and and what happens with practice comes professional growth. Yeah. Right? Can I ask a question? What does practice consist of? Is it like finding the shortest route to to a listing or a, a house that's for sale, an open house? Who can set up the signs quicker? From an outsider's perspective, what kind of practice makes Graham so much better? I'll jump on that a little bit because John brings such a, a, an interesting perspective on what we talk about. And when talking to a buyer, it's just, you want to find a house? Okay, well, let's go find a house. It's not that. It's just letting them know, too, what the benefits are. And when you hit a roadblock going, okay, you have two choices here. You can go A or B. And this is what A looks like, and here's what B looks like. And simplifying it, but putting that away so it's digestible for a client to understand because it's overwhelming, right? So you, Graham and I could chat all day to a client, but then they'll be confused. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of really just boiling it down. Listen, you have an option here. You can put a little bit more down on your deposit or you pay down points, and that leads to this kind of rate or this kind of rate. Well, we can't afford it. We don't have the other $200 a month. Okay, well, he's going to have options for people. So helping him get from A to B easier, I see. it's kind of like a coach. Mm -hmm. Again, he's coaching, right? Don't you think that? Yeah, no, definitely. Can, can I take a run at that answer, Jeff? Mm -hmm. I go back to the definition of the word sell, mm -hmm. and it's from an old English word, selling. And do you know what it means? No, no, no clue. Uh, most people would think it means to take, like to take one's money, mm -hmm. right? But the definition of the word selling means to give to give your time, your knowledge, your expertise, passion, enthusiasm to help people get what they want. So most of the time when I'm in a practice session with Graham, we're practicing on how he can, through a really great line of questioning, help 
his client self-discover what it is that they really want when they're searching for a house. As you develop those skills of asking your client what they want, you have a better chance of, of giving them what they want. I don't know about sports guys, but you would want to know who you're pitching to. You would want to know who's on the other side of that. And when you do the amount of deals that this team does, you, you know the personalities that you are working with. You know a little bit about the listing agent. You know how they like to you know, communicate, how they like to be handled. So I imagine that's helpful, too, when you're you know, trying to figure out how to really get your, your client's offer to the top of the list. It reminds me, too, of uh, you use the word leader for Graham as a, as a person leading the, the buyer to help them get what they want. And a couple of leadership styles that are used the best to get the best result. These two leadership styles are used in conjunction with one another. And one is coaching, and that's just merely asking questions to find out what they're looking for, right? Mm-hmm. And, this, and the second one is being authoritative. Not authoritarian, authoritative, which means, hey, come with me. I know how to get us to the promised land. Put your trust in me, and we'll get there together. And when you combine those two things, um, that's where leadership, real leadership and coaching occur. And that's what I hear Graham doing. Graham is a very humble person. But I think one of the things, too, why I uh, love working with Graham is, you know, somebody will give me a call and say, hey, we're going to thinking about selling our house. And I, I allude to Graham and he's going, OK, he's already calculating who he has in his head. And he says, hey, I'm, we got a heads up on this. You know, we're not sure it's going to happen, but there's a good chance we might have this thing available. And uh, are you still, is that still what you want? Absolutely. I guess in swimming, that's cheating because you jump in the pool before everybody else. But in real estate, it's providing good value, <laughs> right? That's so, not cheating here. Yeah. No. So, so I think that's great. And I also think it's so fun because we do collaborate so much. Because, Bobby, when you say real estate's a pretty individual, in general, right. you're on your own, right? Typically, yeah. yeah. That's why I think you guys were such a good fit with this company is because, yeah, we're, yeah we, we try to really promote the team aspect here right. and it, and you really can help your client from working together you yep. know they're the ones who benefit for sure between graham and dakota and sharon other agents on the you know everybody on the team the collaboration i think goes a long way and boy he learns stuff and brings it in shares it with us we share some things with each other i think we all get better can you give an example how that collaboration has benefited some of our clients obviously between you and the you know Dakota and Sharon, everybody upstairs. Our customer service team. Our customer team. service team. Yeah. I mean, when it comes down to, you know, I mean, even just come down, let's say, request for repairs, right? You've got Dakota upstairs that's closed. What, how many transactions were you now? Thousand. Yeah. Whatever. Something. <laughs> exactly. A lot. A lot of transactions. If I have questions, you know, about the, how to handle something on the request, Dakota's, Dakota's done it. You know, he's done it more times than I have because he's right. done it for every single, you know, he's done all your transactions, mine, right. all the other agents' transactions. Right. You have that wealth of knowledge. It allows for me to go back to the clients and ex- explain it in a way that I might not see it the first way. It's a win-win for everyone, right? Because now their offer and their request is stronger. You know, and it was and it wasn't necessarily my idea, but it was Dakota because he's done this so many times, right? You know, and vice versa. So yeah, we're drawing on hundreds of years of knowledge combined. You know, yes. I've got the old brain, Dakota. You guys have the young brain. You know, but I, I'm just saying, you know, right. he, he is so good at that specific portion. You know, sharing Extremely. with the listing. Hey, we're going to put this in the counter offer. Well, what about that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mean. And it's automatic because we're selling the same place. Um, and Bobby, no disrespect, but industry wide in the county, how many? What percentage of agents do you think come to the office versus work from their home these days? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And Graham, I mean, when we're working from home, it's not the same. No. Right. That's valid. So the yeah. the, the environment we create, the information we can get mm-hmm. is so timely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's nice to have vendors that are available, like the escrow, the title, the lender, the inspectors. But here we can do that so quickly. And I'm just starting to realize how valuable that is for our clients. And, and it shows up in the answers we can give them and the speed in which they can give them. Hey, we were talking about that a few minutes or yesterday, um, the, the speed of the market. You were talking about what it was like six, 12 months ago helping a buyer versus today. And, and what, what changes did you notice? Because I thought it was really cool. We, we were coming out of an environment um, in the last, you know, geez, you know, 12 to 18 months where with you know, working with a buyer, you had to move fast or else you weren't going to get the property, right? And you were, you were basically just giving the seller everything they wanted. Like I joked, like even your, you know, your firstborn child, it was just <laughs> right. like, just give us the house. And we're not, really not in that environment anymore. 
Um, you don't have to be in that environment, maybe I should say. Right. Um, I, you know, my mentality is to still kind of stay in that environment because it gives you a competitive edge. Sure. Um, but still, you know, I have to check myself sometimes, be okay, well, maybe we just need to, you know, take a step back, take a couple of deep breaths. We have the time now. Right. You know, we don't need to just accept this offer, this counter offer right away. We have right. time to maybe sit down and maybe put a little, put another counter offer back that's maybe going to get, you know, help the buyer a little bit more. Right, um, and the seller is, doesn't have as many offers to choose from right now, so they're willing to you know come to the table and talk about that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a breath of fresh air, um, but at the same time you don't want to take your foot too far off the gas because it's still a very competitive market. So you definitely want to stay strong, but you you do, you do have a little extra time to kind of take that breath, yeah, and and and, and really make sure you're 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 representing your client to your fullest ability. A little more balanced, right? Sounds like an art form. Yeah. Well, like yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but even still, I mean, good properties, whether there's a recession going on or whatever, there's, you, somebody's going to come in and it can happen very quickly. Very. So that is a fine balance for sure. Yeah. It's interesting because you just sometimes like, whoa, look at all the activity. And other times like, what happened to the buyers for this property? You, you never know. Exactly. Yeah. I think we could be back in a market that you described as 12 <laughs> or 18 months ago before the end of the year. Yeah. Oh, geez. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fasten, fasten your seatbelts. Been yeah. there, done that. Yeah. Have fun on your vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Are you taking the kids? Yeah. <laughs> yep, we're all going. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, how, how long a moly. flight? Um, on, the, well, on the way there, it's not too bad. It's two two back to back 11 hour flights. Ooh. And then oh, on the way. You're right. That's not bad at all. On, on the way there. <laughs> it's not good <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my the, gosh. On the way back, it's a 16, uh, almost 17 hour flight on the way back, and then a five hour after that, which is easy. So with three kids and this goes back to the uh, whole practice uh, concept yeah. I've, I've noticed um, my son plays uh, basketball and your son plays basketball and you're right. the coach correct so he's had to deal with a bunch of first and second graders <laughs> for the last several weeks and that's all in preparation for what you have to deal <laughs> with on your, on your travels right? <laughs> exactly exactly yep yep getting ready well have fun Thank yes. you. Yes, have fun. Be careful. All right. Anybody else want to share anything uh, before we wrap this up? I'm just glad. Virtually six years ago, Graham and I were able to join forces. So it's been uh, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. So I appreciate having you on the team. Same here. Thank yeah. you, Hal. That, yeah, was th that was thoughtful, Hal. Yeah. yeah. Great job. Yeah. It's true. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you for everybody that's watching and listening. Um, Graham, you're amazing. So is everybody else on this team. Uh, we will talk to everybody next week. Thank you for listening to the House Swayze podcast. Be sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. Check for it in your feed for the latest information on the San Luis Obispo County market. The Slow County Real Estate with House Swayze podcast is available wherever you get your podcast and on housewayze.com where you can find current listings and other real estate tips. Housewayze.com, that's H-A-L-S-W-E-A-S-E-Y.com. I am James Bueno, Director of Marketing for the House Swayze Group. If you're looking for anything real estate, give us a call, 805-781-3750. San Luis Obispo Real Estate Podcast with House Swayze is also on YouTube. Now you can see people talk about real estate in one of California's hottest markets. Get the latest episode on the podcast page at TeamSwayze.com or subscribe to House Swayze on YouTube. Al Swayze is a licensed California real estate broker. DRE number 01111911. The Slow County Real Estate with Hal Swayze podcast is a production of AGM Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.